What has been the moment in your time at Canterbury that has given you the most joy? I think uh, going to the rehearsal with the kids from Western Michigan who were rehearsing uh, this amazing performance, which I had not seen when I met them, called Seven Passages, and it's about those, I think uh, Phyllis Tribble calls, uh, talks about the um, uh, texts of terror for women, and these are the seven passages or texts of terror for, for gay and lesbian people. On the one hand, I know that, that young people are the not the church of tomorrow, they're the church of today, but, but there was something about uh, being with these kids and understanding that they would inherit this this um, institution that sometimes drives us crazy but somehow we still believe in that they would inherit that and what a what a different place it's going to be that they would be able to do this performance uh, which which takes those seven passages and robs them of their venom and replaces them with uh, God's love, uh, and that they would do that so early in their lives, and and clearly be, be there with their hearts. I mean, this is, this is not an acting job for them. They they embody the voices that they, um, that they speak, and um, there is just something about feeling like you know what this is going to be just fine. This is going to be just fine. Where you know it's going to be painful for a while, and uh, it's not going to all be pretty, but we're going to be just fine. That was thrilling. The other time for me that was joyful in a, in a wholly different way was uh, worshiping every morning with the brothers at uh, the Franciscan brothers at the Greyfriars. I could take all of the people, all of the emotions that I had absorbed the day before and, and bring them to God and, and, the, and the ones that were weighing me down I could leave there. And there were only the four brothers and me every morning at seven o'clock, and um, it's as if we were breathing as one organism. And it was like a, a participation in the oneness that we're called to in Christ. And uh, of course, you can't, you know, maintain that oneness all day long. But 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 to have a few minutes of it at the beginning of every day and to come into their place, which is um, it's where the river uh, divides. They have, they're, they're on this island. There's about an acre of wildflowers, and the chapel is built over the river, so you hear the river running beneath, and there are pigeons cooing on the roof, and then you get into this kind of breathing thing. It's, it, well, it's, it's another experience of, this is gonna be all right. You know, if the church has been praying this way, and inviting God in in this way, for all these years, we're going to be able to do it for a lot more years. What brought you to tears? Um, there's an incredibly brave man here. He is the only bishop to come here from Rwanda. His uh, primate declared that none of them would come and he came anyway. He's here in defiance of his primate and and he engaged me in a way that was just you know I just I just I can't imagine his bravery and um, and he came back for more I mean you know like one time wasn't enough for him he he really wanted to engage that brought me to tears. Here's someone whose vision of the church that flies in the face of, of uh, the church that particularly surrounds him at the moment. And his brave witness is astounding to me. Uh, I don't know what he'll face when he goes back. I don't think he knows what he'll face when he goes back. But by God, he was here. And he was at the table. And and he wanted to talk. Can't beat that. One of our 
favorite quotations uh, is from Desmond Tutu when asked to do sort of discuss, you know, what, what, tell us what Anglicans are, and he said, we meet. And, and that's exactly what happened here. We met. And it was wonderful, and it was awful, and it was uh, easy, and it was hard, and it was um, holy, and and that's what Anglicans do. Yeah. Uh, they don't necessarily agree. They don't necessarily have the same priorities. They don't use the same words to describe that which we hold sacred. But we meet, and we we converse and we look for and discover the Christ in one another. I think ours has been a really powerful witness and uh, I can't tell you the number of bishops who when they sang the hymn All Are Welcome at the opening service nobody had to point out the irony of that and we were on their minds and in their hearts I think many of them for the whole conference. Um, and so I, you know, and, and what I love about that is, is that uh, we were here, we were that kind of presence and witness, uh, not because we stormed the pulpit and wrestled the microphone out of the Archbishop of Canterbury's hands, or, you know, un, unfurled some kind of rude banner, or uh, made some kind of a demonstration. We were just this quiet, calm, joyful presence. And, you know, I've always said, you know, that LGBT people need to live their lives with such joy that there will be no doubt that God is in our heart. And I think almost to a person, the, 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 the witness for LGBT people here has been that, that joyful. And, um, uh, you know, maybe together we were the least stressed people here. I think hearts have been changed here, not just by me, but by lots of people, uh, literally one heart at a time. There was a, a, a remarkable Indian bishop who modeled for me what I, th I think is really uh, such an important tone. He uh, stood up and, and said, he, d he described the, the difficulties in his life and ministry caused by my election and consecration. And they were real. Um, but he did it without any rancor, without any anger, without casting blame. He just described what is. And I said back to him, you know, I, you know, I don't have the answer to this. I, I just don't know. Well, the only thing I know is that you have to go on being the church as best you can in your context, and I have to go on being the church as best I can in my context. And somehow we have to hold on desperately to one another uh, while we figure this out. But what I do know is that um, hearing you describe that to me, uh, I will never forget it. And I will carry it in my heart with me everywhere. As, as I felt he would carry my story and me in his heart. It was an amazing exchange. And, you know, by the world's eyes, nothing got solved. Uh, but I think in God's eyes, almost everything got solved. And afterwards, he came up to me and uh, patted me on the arm and thanked me and and said that he would be praying for me and uh, you know that at its heart I think that's a, that's what this Lambeth conference has been about. Don't you know this train, this train is bound for glory? Don't deliver, don't deliver nothing but the truth. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord. gospel train, well, gospel come train. on children. Come on. Don't deliver nothing but the truth. Oh,